The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. The world is filled with wounded people who don't know how to be who they are. They're not being themselves because they think whoever they are is not worth anything. And so they're pretending, trying to be somebody they're not, trying to be like somebody else, wearing masks, got a frozen smile on their face, acting like everything's all right when they're bleeding to death on the inside. And God doesn't want us to have to pretend. He wants us to get honest enough to receive the healing that's ours through the death and resurrection of Christ and then be a real person, an individual person, confident in who you are in Christ, not having to compete with anybody or compare yourself with anybody else. Can anybody say amen? amen. Now, Got a statement for you. It's okay to not be okay. <laughs> you see, we desperately don't want people to know that we're not okay. <laughs> we want everybody to think that we have got it all together. I mean, I am the together person in the neighborhood. No problem, no problem. No worries, cool. But then when you become a Christian, the language is changing, but the problem's still the same. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> you go to church with your church face, with your frozen Holy Ghost smile. <laughs> your little Christianese that you've learned. Oh, I know, David and I would fight all the way to church, hit the front door, praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Woo, woo, woo. Get back in the car, fight all the way home. I'd get mad at him because he wanted to watch football, and then I'd go back in the bathroom and cry all day, spend the next day depressed do that all week and then go back to church the next week. Praise the Lord, glory to God, hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, is anybody where I'm living? All right. But I tell you what, the Holy Ghost wants to take it apart. You better let him take it apart before you fall apart. And then let him put it back together so it's put in order right. You cannot get help from God if you will not admit that you need help. So the first thing we need to do is go to God and say, I love you, Lord, I appreciate my salvation, but I am a mess. And I want some truth. I don't want to live in deception. Here's another prayer to pray every day. God, open my eyes in any area where I am deceived and teach me truth. We'll talk a little bit more about deception in one of the other messages because we are so deceived in so many areas. And we think everybody else has got a problem. And it's your fault I'm not happy. And it's your fault I'm not happy. And if, if you would do this, then I wouldn't have this problem. <laughs> Psalm 109.22. Let's take a look at how honest David was. For I am poor and needy, <laughs> and my heart is wounded and stricken within me. I'm telling you, the psalmist David was shockingly real with God. As you read the psalms, you find that he was not playing a pretend game. Let me say again, it is okay to not be okay. If you are not okay, you don't have to pretend that you are okay. <laughs> you can say, I need help. I need help from God. James 5, 16 says, confess your faults to one another that you might be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. Now, obviously, we know that we confess our sins to God and that our forgiveness comes 
from him. But it's good sometimes to just talk to somebody and get some things out of you. The problem we have today is because loyalty and honor has gone by the wayside and integrity is a word that a lot of young people don't even understand. Many people find it difficult to find somebody that they can talk to and really trust that they're going to keep their secrets. But there are people, choose wisely, but find a good friend, a trusted family member, a trusted spiritual leader, if you need to talk to somebody that you can talk to. I don't encourage anybody to go sit in counseling for 20 years, but if you need counseling, they're bound by law not to tell your secrets. <laughs> Sometimes we just need to vent. We just need to get it out. For years and years and years, I mean, I was in my 20s before I ever told anybody what had happened to me. What a lonely secret to live with that many years. Why did I not tell anybody? I was afraid of what they'd think of me. I was afraid that my dad fight, my, might find out that I told somebody. I was afraid that my mother might find out that I told somebody. That's exactly where Satan wants us living in fear. He wants to practically ruin our lives and then make us afraid that somebody will ever find out. Maybe you used to be in prostitution and now you're afraid that somebody will find out. Whatever the case might be. Secrets buried alive never die. They just keep eating at us. And there's value in this confess your faults to one another that you may be healed. Sometimes if you've just got something bugging you, the enemy's attacking you and you just can't seem to get beyond it. I remember one time when I was having a real problem with jealousy towards someone. And I didn't want to feel that way. It was stupid, but I did feel that way and I couldn't get over it. And I just felt like the Lord put on my heart that I just needed to go and tell Dave and ask him to pray for me. Well, it's humbling sometimes to have to tell somebody what you're going through or what you've done. But it's in that very act of humility that we receive help from God. God helps the humble. God helps those who are willing to say, I need help. Don't stay in the dark by yourself. What you bring out into the light gets exposed. Very often when we have problems and we're hurting, we always blame it on somebody else. It's always somebody else's fault. That started in the garden, the blame game. And it's carried on in probably almost every person's life. I did it. I'm sure you do it. If I'm late for work, it's somebody else's fault. Somebody else at the house should have done something that they didn't do, that then I had to deal with, that then made me late. <laughs> Come on. Never occurs to us that maybe we should have gotten up early and <laughs> left a little margin in our life so we were, could account for some of those things that we didn't plan for. So don't let somebody blame you for their problems and don't blame somebody else for your problems. You say, well, it's not my fault. Somebody did this to me or that to me. Well, you know what? Maybe, maybe the way you are right now is not your fault, but don't let what happened to you become an excuse to stay that way. I mean, you know, when I started finding out that God cared about my whole life and this wasn't just a deal where I got saved and now if I could just muddle through and make it till I got to heaven, then I could have a mansion and a little bit of happiness. I was amazed when I found out that I had such a mess in my soul from the things that happened to me in my past and that there was a promise in the Bible to cover every single one of them, that there was not one of those pains that I had to live with, that God had it all covered and I needed to find out what was mine, bought, paid for and delivered by the blood of Christ and I needed to start opening up those packages and being able to enjoy the life that Jesus died for me to have. So maybe you don't know that either. Maybe somebody drugged you here tonight. Maybe they fed you and promised you all kinds of stuff if you'd come. <laughs> but the thing is, is 
now you're here and you're not out of the building yet <laughs> when we come to a relationship with Christ there's a divine exchange oh I love it he takes the bad stuff and gives us the good stuff I'll give you an example when I married Dave I did not have a car and Dave had a car now as soon as I said I do I had a car How many of you get it? You understand it now, right? All right. Well, see, when, when you say, I receive Christ, that's like saying, I do. And all of his goodness swallows up all of your nothingness. My not having a car got swallowed up by Dave's having a car. It was wonderful. All of a sudden, I had all kinds of stuff I didn't have before. It's a good deal. Jesus gives us joy for mourning, beauty for ashes, praise instead of depression, respect for ourselves instead of shame, forgiveness instead of blame, hope instead of despair, righteousness instead of guilt, and on and on and on and on and on. But you cannot keep the ashes and have the beauty. Now we're digging in. Say, so what do you mean by that? Well, you know, if you want to have the beautiful life that Christ wants you to have, then you can't just get in a foul mood on Thursday and sit around all day and just think about all the junk that everybody's done to you your whole life and how ticked off you are and how you're going to get them back and you're going to shut them out and I'm not going to this and I'm not going to that. You got to get rid of your ashes. You give those up and you'll get the beauty. Amen. My brother died two or three years ago from alcohol and drugs and mental illness. He was nine years younger than me. Had every opportunity to have a wonderful life. He could have been here in this conference tonight working on our staff did for a few years and I don't have time to tell you the whole story but by the time they found him in this building his body was extremely decomposed and and uh, so we had him cremated and they sent his ashes back and we took them t to the most beautiful place that we could find and spread his ashes we wanted him he didn't have a very beautiful life but we wanted his ashes to land up in a beautiful place because we believe because of things that he had gone through in his past that God did receive him home. He had accepted Christ as his savior. He just was a messed up guy. He just was a messed up guy. God is extremely merciful. I believe he understands our pain and even sometimes our messed upness. <laughs> and uh, Sometimes, you know, and I don't mean to use this in a wrong way at all, so don't be offended if you're doing this. I'm just trying to make an analogy. Sometimes when, when people have their loved ones cremated, they, want to, they keep their ashes sitting somewhere. And you, you can do that in your life. You can have the ashes of your past, and you can keep them somewhere. Maybe you don't pay attention to them often, but boy, sometimes you just want to go and look them over again. <laughs> I'm suggesting that you take the ashes from your past and you spread them somewhere and let them get turned into beauty. Amen.